Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Lost Ark guide. Today I'm going to be covering Breaker, the brand new class that just came out for us in the West in Lost Ark. I'm going to be going over both the Spec Hitmaster build as well as the Crit Entropy build. And so without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to be covering the Brawl King Storm, which is, like I said, the Spec Hitmaster build. What this class engraving actually does is increase your outgoing damage by 14%. It also increases the duration of your identity and it gives you 20% attack speed while you're inside of it. While you're inside the identity, you also have access to an ability called Falling Blossoms. This ability is actually your hardest hitting skill, and it has built-in push immunity, and it auto-regenerates shock energy whenever you charge it up. The class engraving also gives the skill an additional 15% crit rate and 80% more damage. Now, whenever you use any skills, the outgoing damage is going to be increased by 4% for every unit of shock that you have. So your hardest hitting skills, you want to make sure that you're using them when you have full shock meter, at which point the ability icon will glow a, like, golden border around it to let you know that that's when you want to use that skill. For your stats, you're going to want full spec, with crit only coming from your necklace and bracelet. For your skills, you're going to be using Brawl King's Advance with Fighting Spirit, Shoulder Slam, and Endurance Training, Falling Star with Focus, Flame Fist, and Beast Rush. Rush, Crater Strike with Damage Amplification and Fighting Spirit Enhancement, 100 Fists with Wide Hit, Relentless Fighting Spirit, and Shadow Fist, though you can use any of the top row tripods for this skill. You're also going to use Adamantine Assault with Quick Combo, Indomitable Fighting Spirit, and Ultimate Strike, Yeon Gil Storm Strike with Fighting Spirit, Rapid Assault, and Limit Break, Celestial Force Barrage with Swift Fingers, Hyper Focus, and Limit Break, and finally Eye of the Storm with Challenger, Sweet Spot, and Limit Break as well. Out of all these tripods, the most most important ones that you want to make sure you are getting are the meter generation tripod on Young Gilstorm Strike as well as your yellow skills. And you also want to focus the DPS tripods on Celestial Force and Eye of the Storm. For your awakening, you're going to be using Celestial Door as this is an actual DPS awakening. The alternative awakening, Butterfly Sting, is simply a meter generating skill. When you cast it, at the end of it, it will fully fill up your identity bar. So you can still have an an alternate loadout that has like Awakening 3 and Dominion to make the cooldown really really low if you want to pop it before going into a raid gate to save yourself on some stimulants. For your gems you're going to want both a CDR and damage gem on Falling Star, Eye of the Storm, and Celestial Force Barrage, a damage gem on your identity, skill, Falling Blossoms, and a CDR gem for Brawl King's Advanced, Creative Strike, Adamantine Assault, and 100 Fists. For your standard 5-3 engravings that you can use the Makoko event on, you're going to want Brawl King, Grudge, Keen Blunt, Supercharge, and Adrenaline. The reason you're running Supercharge is because both Eye of the Storm and Falling Blossoms are charge skills, and those two skills make up basically like 70% like of your damage, so it's a very efficient engraving. For your gear set, you're going to want to run Hallucination for the unconditional crit rate increase, since crit is basically the only thing this class really struggles with. For your cards, pretty much the standard cards for any DPS, you want to use Light of Salvation or KLC, and if you don't have those, then you can use Deep Dive, and if you don't have that, you can use Lost One Cliff, and if you don't have that, then you can use Star of Destiny. For your elixirs, you're mainly going to want to go for the Master set. This again is to increase your crit rate. <laughs>
Now let's move on to arguably the much more popular version of the class engraving, and that is Azura's Path. Now Azura's Path class engraving actually does quite a, you know, quite a few different things. The first thing it does is that it reduces the cap, the maximum amount of stamina and shock gauge that you can have by 30%. It also gives you two new abilities. The first one is called Defensive Speculation. For this one, you press X by default to gain a shield. Now this shield gives you push immunity and it's equivalent to 40% of your maximum HP. You also take 20% reduced damage while you have the shield up. And if you do get hit, it extends the duration of the shield from two seconds to five seconds. And this has a default of a 10 second cooldown. Azura's Path also changes the way that you gain identity meter. So before you would have to land abilities on the boss in order to fill the gauge, but with Azura's Path, you gain meter by alternating between stamina and shock skills, and you don't even have to hit the boss. So by casting a shock skill after a stamina skill, it will refill 4% of your gauge. This means that you need to alternate 26 times in order to fill up the identity completely. Now, once you have your meter full, you gain access to the second ability that Azura's Path gives you, and that is the Azura State. So when you activate Azura State, you can actually use your auto attacks that are now empowered to deal a shitload of damage. The damage that your auto attacks deal in this state scales off of your direct crit rate. So that means the crit rate that you are getting on your actual character page does not include things like crit synergies, since that does not give you crit rate, it simply makes the boss more likely to be crit. The Class Engraving also just gives you 15% more move speed for just being in combat, so essentially, you know, with your support as well as your Swiftness stat, which is about 10%, you're gonna be sitting at about 37% move speed all of the time, which is really, really nice, and that is one of the reasons why Raid Captain is so effective. So speaking of crit and Swiftness and all that, the stats that you're gonna want are full crit, you want crit on every single thing, with Swiftness only coming from your necklace and bracelet, you do not want any spec because spec does not benefit Azura at all. The best way I can describe it is that crit to Azura is the same as spec to most other burst classes. So usually spec increases the amount of damage you do in your burst. In this case, instead of spec, it's actually crit rate, and it's the first ever class to have something like this. For your skills, you're gonna wanna be using Brawl King's Advance with excellent mobility, shoulder slam, and endurance training. Falling Star with Focus, Flame Fist, and Beast Rush. Crater Strike with Damage Amplification, Furious Hit, and Space Distortion. Haymaker with Damage Amplification and Circumstantial Judgment. Spiral Uppercut with Additional Strike, Spiral Shot, and Gale Fist. Explosive Fist with shock efficiency, weak point detection, and gravitational blow, and Eye of the Storm with energy circulation, close quarters, and divine axis. Now for your last skill, you have two choices. You can use Zafra Nova, which does quite a decent amount of damage, or if you want to cycle your rotation a little bit faster, you can use Obliteration. Now the benefit of this is that you don't have to run an extra damage gem if you use Obliteration, as well as you do get a faster rotation, but the benefit of using Zafra Nova is that it is just just an overall higher damage ceiling. So I recommend you kind of try them both out, especially if you were gonna make the character with the event. There's really no reason not to, right? You can try them out and with event gems and see for yourself which one you prefer. Out of all these, the most important tripods are the stamina cost reduction tripods on your green and blue skills. And this is because, again, you have a lower capacity than you know, if you weren't using this class engraving. So you do need to decrease the cost of stamina to make your rotation fluid. Other than that, you can focus on the DPS tripods for Eye of the Storm, Zafra Nova, Explosive Fist, and Spiral Uppercut. For your Awakening, you're gonna wanna be using Butterfly Sting because you don't really care about Awakening damage in this, you don't have any spec. The main reason you want it is because Butterfly Sting automatically fills up your meter, and filling up your meter takes a long time on this uh, class engraving. So this allows you to have two bursts back to back and you can, you know, it's up to you to make use of them efficiently. For your gems, you're definitely gonna want a damage and CDR gem for Explosive Fist and Eye of the Storm. You're gonna want a damage gem on Falling Star and Spiral Uppercut as well as your Azura Destruction basic attack damage. And for your cooldowns, it depends again on what skills you took. If you took Obliteration, you're gonna want a cooldown gem from Obliteration and you can also use one on Falling Star. For your default 5-3 engravings, you should be running Azura, Grudge, Master Brawler, Raid Captain, and Adrenaline. And once you upgrade to 5 
3 plus 1, you have two options. You can either run Adrenaline 3 and Ether Predator 1, or you can run Keen Blunt 3 and Adrenaline 1. Now, now depending on what engravings you actually went for, that will determine what elixir set you go for. If you went with Ether Predator 1 and Adrenaline 3, you're going to want Critical. And if you went with Adrenaline 1 and Keen Blunt 3, then you're going to want Master. And the reason is because since Master gives you 7% crit rate, it actually is a larger DPS increase due to the unique scaling of your Azura basic attack. So unless you have a 9-7 stone, you're going to want Master Set with your Adrenaline. This is like the first class in the game that really truly excels with a 9-7 stone because it's no longer just 5% crit rate increase, right, that everybody would love, but this is actually a direct increase in your actual damage because of the scaling. As for your gear set, you're going to want Entropy. All of the skills that you're going to be DPSing with have a head attack modifier, so you're definitely going to want to be landing everything as a head attack, so Entropy is the only set that you would use in this case. For your cards, same thing as always, it's a DPS. LOS, KLC, Deep Dive, Lost Wind, Star of Destiny, you know the drill. As for the rotation, there really is no set rotation. The only thing I can tell you is that if you have flat, uh, Eye of the Storm available to use before you go into your Azure Estate, you should definitely use it because it is a really hard hitting skill. Other than that, you can just, as long as you're making sure to swap between, you know, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, there really should be no problems. And even if you're whiffing them, you should be trying to land King's Advance due to the last tripod, which reduces its cooldown by 50% if it actually does hit a target. So you can whiff the other stuff, try to land that so that way you can keep a cycle going constantly and permanently. Also, for Chaos Dungeons, these are the skills that I'm using for Chaos Dungeons. Honestly, guys, your main goal in Chaos Dungeons is to just spam the crap out of Zephyr Nova and Earthbreaker, basically, and just have enough stamina to be able to use those two skills over and over again uh, in order to clear out the entire rooms. So feel free to experiment, but this is what's worked for me, and I don't really know if, like, it's really worth anything else. The only other tip I can give you is to use Azura's Path class engraving, even if you're not playing that build. Uh, but using it in Chaos Dungeons simply for the ability to use the shield so you don't just die but also the movement speed is also the passive movement speed is is very nice so yeah also keep in mind that even if you don't end up using zephyr nova in your regular azura build you should still keep one of the event gems for damage just so that you can run these chaos dungeons a little bit easier well guys i hope that video helps you out. I will leave a link to my Discord in the video description. You guys can feel free to ask me any questions, join my server, you can type in the Lost Ark channel, or you can message me directly. My DMs are always open, so if anybody wants to ask anything or you want any questions, it can be about any class as well, then feel free to do that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in like nine months, whenever they make a new class. GG's.